$1,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999
Considering most cows weigh between 1,600 and 2,400 pounds, I'd say their fear of stairs is pretty rational, wouldn't you? 19th century women were afraid of a made-up condition called bicycle face. Let's wind the clock back a moment to the late 19th century, a time when the bicycle was a novel invention that had women quivering in their boots. You see, doctors had announced that this newfangled contraption could actually cause a terrifying medical condition known as bicycle face. The long and short was that any woman who dared to cycle risked getting stuck with an ugly expression on her face forever. Why it affected only women remains to be seen, but a quote from the Literary Digest in 1895 described those afflicted with bicycle faces, unusually flushed, but sometimes pale, often with lips more or less drawn, and with the beginning of dark shadows under the eyes, always with an expression of weariness. Others said it was characterized by a hard clenched jaw and bulging eyes. Whatever it was, women didn't want it, so they didn't cycle. That is until 1897 when a female doctor named Sarah Hackett Stevenson confirmed what everyone knew all along. Cycling cannot cause lasting facial damage. Turns out the whole thing was just a made up ploy by men who were afraid that bicycles were evil instruments of feminism, which seems a little extreme to me. There's an American town with a population of one. It's no secret that some people prefer to be alone. But one woman enjoys her own company so much that she is literally the only resident in her town of Manawi in Nebraska. 86-year-old Elsie Eiler is currently employed as the town's mayor, librarian, bartender, secretary, clerk, and tavern owner. At 9 a.m. every morning, apart from Mondays, Eiler opens Manawi Tavern where she serves burgers at $3.50 a pop, hot dogs at $1.25, and beers, which are hilariously pegged as the coldest beer in town. You might think she'd have no customers, but Eiler has already welcomed visitors from 47 states and 41 countries, and the tavern acts as a hangout for residents of the neighboring towns. Back in the 1930s, Manawi was a bustling railroad town, but people gradually started moving away, and when Eiler's husband Rudy died in 2004, she became the only remaining resident. Eiler jokes that one of the main perks of living in a one-person town is that she always wins the vote for mayor by a landslide victory. But there are a couple of drawbacks too. She collects $500 in taxes from herself to keep the town's three lampposts lit and the water running. Why do men have Adam's apples? For men, having an Adam's apple, that weird hard lump that bobs up and down the neck, is just a fact of life. But why don't women have them too? Its nickname refers to the part in the Bible where Adam eats the forbidden fruit and gets part of it stuck in his throat. However, the Adam's apple is also known as the thyroid cartilage because, well, it's a piece of cartilage that sits atop the thyroid gland. What you probably don't know is that both boys and girls start out with similarly sized thyroid cartilage, but that all changes when puberty hits. As their testosterone levels increase and their voices get lower, boys' larynx, or voice box, becomes enlarged, causing the Adam's apple to protrude. But what does it do exactly? Well, much like the cartilage in your ears or nose, thyroid cartilage has no medical purpose, other than being a dead ringer for when a guy is lying to his wife about his whereabouts the night before. That's right, the Adam's apple has a particular tendency to jump uncontrollably when you're nervous. Why are donut boxes always pink in movies? Dunkin' Donuts houses its sweet treats in neon orange and pink, while Krispy Kreme favors the polka dot pattern instead but come to LA and the no frills pink donut box is what you'll find. In fact, it's been said that anytime you see a movie or sitcom set in New York and a pink donut box appears, you'll know that filming actually took place in LA. The tradition can be traced right back to the mid 1970s when a regime known as the Khmer Rouge was responsible for orchestrating the Cambodian genocide. I know moving from donut boxes to mass genocide seems like quite a jump, but stay with me. As many Cambodians fled to LA, they found an unexpected lifeline in the humble donut shop business. But there's one particular unsung culinary hero responsible for the pinking of the box, Ted Noy. Noy set up a donut selling empire across LA, staffed by hundreds of countrymen whose visas he sponsored. Up until this point, donuts were housed in clean white boxes and until Noy, being the business savvy guy he was, asked his supplier Wesco if there were any cheaper alternatives. It just so happened Wesco had a load of pink cardboard stock lying around and the rest is history. As LA became synonymous with cinema, so too did the pink donut box. So there you have it. Not just a run of the mill movie prop. Iceland has a designated elf whisperer. You probably believed in all sorts of magical creatures as a kid, 
but in Iceland, the existence of little elves is pretty much an undisputed fact of life. Ragnar Raga Jonsdotter has taken on a role as an unofficial elf whisperer. It may sound crazy, but ever since she was a little girl, Raga has had the ability to see and speak with elves or Huldafolk, which live in invisible communities throughout Iceland. She's not alone in her beliefs though. In a survey in 1998, 54.4% of all Icelanders interviewed said they believed in elves. As the official spokesperson for these invisible people, Raga has been entrusted to survey potential building sites in case they destroy elf communities. Back in 2016, the development of a planned road was halted after Raga claimed that it was a threat to an elven church named Ofgerchka, which to you and me, looked like a giant boulder. Thankfully, the government later agreed to use a crane to move the 70-ton rock out of the path of the road, sparing the worship place of Iceland's invisible population. What is the highest anyone has ever counted to? Believe it or not, there is actually a verified record for the highest number anyone has counted to in one sitting. Back in 2007, on June 18th, 31-year-old Jeremy Harper from Birmingham, Alabama locked himself in his home and proceeded to count aloud to 1 million, a landmark which was eventually achieved 89 days later on September 14th. 999,998. 999,999. 1 million. To achieve this feat, Harper counted for 16 hours a day, even growing a beard in the process. You're probably thinking, who has the time to hang about counting to a million anyway? Well, Harper didn't just do this for fun. He live broadcast his entire count to raise money for Push America a charity for the disabled, and he raised an impressive $10,000 for the cause. According to some estimates, if you were to attempt a similar feat without any breaks, it'd take you just over 11 and a half straight days. Assuming you counted at about one number per second, that is, which would be tricky once you reach five figures. To count to one billion, though, it'd take over 31 years. Now that would be impressive. Lobsters communicate by peeing in each other's faces. In case you needed reminding that lobsters are some of the most bizarre creatures on earth, get this, they pee out of their faces, into each other's faces, as their own unique way of communicating. You see, a lobster's bladder is located underneath its brain, which is connected by the urinary tract to two urine release nozzles that are located at the base of their large antenna. When lobsters pee, they also produce pheromones through the urinary system which allow them to communicate. Basically, pee is released from the face and injected into the current produced by the lobster, which projects it forwards. It's even been measured that these urine signals can be ejected up to seven entire body lengths ahead of them, which is some pretty powerful peeing. Generally, lobsters don't get along. If two males bump into one another, you can almost guarantee a brawl is gonna break out. So where does peeing come in? To prove to the ladies that he's the strongest, the winning lobster will pee in her direction. Because he's happy with his victory, the urine will contain serotonin, which makes it smell nicer. This is one dating technique you definitely shouldn't try at home. Do you have a random piece of trivia up your sleeve that could make me say wow? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.